Hi there, and thanks for joining us today on this Transform Our World Youth Summit webinar. So my name is Alex, and we are from the Let's Go Zero campaign. And we have put together a really fantastic webinar today to talk about um, how you can engage with students and staff. And we've got two special guests who are going to talk to you about that as well. So the Let's Go Zero campaign is a campaign for any school, college and nursery across the UK to sign up to show they want to be zero carbon by 2030. We've got nearly 1,800 schools, colleges, nurseries across the UK signed up already. So if your school isn't signed up, please do get, do get them to sign up um, and be part of this great movement for change to, to really show, show the government and to show our schools and to show our communities that schools want to be leaders. So I'm going to pass you to Suzanne, who's going to talk to you about who our speakers are today. Thank you, Alex. And hi, everyone. I'm Suzanne. I'm the Let's Go Zero program coordinator. And I have the amazing job of speaking to schools across the UK about the initiatives they are taking and within their school gates, but also wider community. We've got two amazing speakers for you today. The first is Ed Moore, who is a year three teacher and eco coordinator from Damers First School who is going to share with you the sustainability initiatives they are taking in within their school and also the ways they are empowering their students to take action in climate change. And over to you, Ed. Thank you. Um, yeah, my, my name's Ed Moore. I'm here. For, I'm an eco coordinator from Damers First School and we've been uh, working on our journey to Let's Go Zero um, uh, for the last sort of uh, two years, two, three years since we signed up. Uh, so we made this amazing garden um, and we have a plastic bottle greenhouse, which uh, was constructed by year three children uh, with support and help from uh, the Prince's Trust and the, and the local fire station up the road. Uh, 1,500 plastic uh, bottles were collected and uh, the, the, the plastic bottle greenhouse was made within... Um, was made within two days and it was all put up and we that's how we grow our our vegetables and our fruits um from seed and we use it in our in our plastic bottle greenhouse um and another thing that we do is we we, we use the produce we sell it at the local market down the road um on every sort of wednesday when we've got enough to sell to the local community uh so we, we make sure that it doesn't go to waste um and we've taken part in uh, the RHS Five Star Garden Scheme, along as along with the Cultivation Street as well. Uh, so here are some of the children. Here are some of the activities that we that we do, and some of the things that we've grown: beetroot, strawberries, and these are all the uh, items that go back into our classroom um, during fruit and snack time, uh, so the children can eat them. Uh, they go out picking apples, and um, we have a bit of a potato competition there in the top right-hand corner. Uh, where where children uh, weigh the potatoes and see um, see how many how many they grow and we incorporate that within our maths um, and then we've got our onions um, and, and the children get to make um, a crumble um, we made fruit crumble uh, in the summer in the summer term as well as um, soups and things we invite the parents to come in and try these items. Um, we've got a ridden food waste composter um, and it was raised, the money was raised through an auction of promises um, for, with the community um, and all our food waste is recycled on site. None of our food waste um, is taken away, which um, is usually a cost. Um, so we're saving money there um, and we're reducing our waste uh, as well. So our food waste goes in and it creates this wonderful compost for um, our school gardens and we can sell it to uh, the local community for donation. And we've even managed to come up with a, a deal with the, the local town council and they use the compost within their parks as well. So we're helping them to reduce their carbon footprint. Um, we've got a nature area. So on the left hand side is what it looked like before. And then on the right hand side, we've got a uh, beautiful wildflower uh, meadow. We've got a nice little uh, willow walkway. And at the end of that willow walkway, uh, there's a trampoline uh, with, where they can jump on and get to the jetty bit and get on their tummies and, and see the wildlife. We've seen amazing wildlife in the last um, 18 months with lots of hedgehogs, toads, frogs, um, 
water boatmen, um, dragonflies. We've seen loads of draglies and um, lo lots of colourful butterflies as well. So we're we're bringing bringing in wildlife into our into our school grounds. Um, another thing that we do, um, which relates to our school values and it also relates to our sustainable development goals. Um, we ask each class within uh, our school to make a pledge each term to help people, animals and the environment. And this is just part of part and parcel of our uh, national curriculum that we do across the school. Um, so schools of um, classes have made pledges to to um, uh, reduce the, the waste within um, within the school lunches. Uh, with videos and top tips for parents. Uh, they've encouraged the local community to feed the birds. Uh, they've raised money to, to sponsor animals. Uh, they've, they've put together food hampers for, for the local community. Uh, they've tidied up their local community as well, but doing litter picks. Um, all kinds of things that, um, that you can do and relate then to the disabled the development goals, which is fantastic. Um, we also been looking at uh, ways that we can reduce the waste within our school um, and we collect cartridges and toners, um, writing instruments, uh, toothbrushes, crisp packets, biscuit wrappers um, and we send these off uh, to be recycled but then we're also raising money for our school um, and we've also encouraged the local community to, to recycle their items with us. And we've got collection points in shops and businesses uh, locally to make it easier for, for them to drop, drop these items off. Um, and the money goes back into our, our environmental work. Um, a real powerful thing that everybody can do and to get children uh, when your school's doing is writing letters um, to businesses that uh, the school is connected to. Um, the children really wanted to swap their... Uh, their milk cartons and straws with uh, reusable glass bottles and beakers um, and they wrote a, a real powerful letter to Cool, to cool Milk uh, who we use uh, asking them if they were if they would swap um, swap to reusable milk bottles and beakers and they agreed um, I know that so, some schools have had problems but if you keep on if you keep if you have something really passionate um, if you're really passionate about something and you really want to see it, see it happen, don't take no for an answer. Keep on going. Keep on sticking, you know, stick to what you believe in. Um, and they eventually uh, they will say yes. Um, so, you know, um, look at the businesses within your schools that you're working with and ask them if they can reduce the waste that they they give you. Cardboard boxes, the plastic bags that say the fruit comes in. Um, the children also asked if we could have some water fountains um, and we had them installed. We had them installed into the local community as well. And also we all we used an awful lot of glue sticks um, and we spent uh, 18 months writing to uh, the glue stick manufacturers um, who said that their glue sticks could be recycled, but they can't. The local council said that they would they would contaminate their their waste. Uh, waste systems and the recycle systems. So um, we came across Ufill and you can refill glue sticks. Um, it, it's produced by a company, um, uh, Learn Play Nexus, and uh, you can refill your glue sticks and then send the empties um, to, be, to uh, be refilled and reused again. So it's a really good concept uh, to reduce your waste, but also reduce your cost. Um, and they actually work as well, which are yeah, fantastic product. Um, and then last of all, uh, the children wanted to uh, reduce the, the air, get better air quality around the school. Um, so working with the strands, um, we, uh, the children with the strands made a map um, to find areas where, where parents could park five or 10 minutes away, but then they could scoot, walk or cycle in. Uh, which um, gave less congestion around our school, but it was a nicer environment and uh, gave less uh, less pollution. Um, and through this and through encouraging 
uh, children to take part in bike it days, um, bling up your bike days, uh, bike it breakfasts. Um, we've managed to get 60% uh, of our school bike and scootering uh, to school. Uh, but my main thing would be um, it just takes one person to, to, to make an action, to, to make a change, uh, to write a letter um, to, to, you know, and to, to get that ball rolling. Um, and that's that's all you need to um, to to start uh, making your school um, uh, get on their journey to becoming uh, zero carbon. Thank you, Ed. That's um, that's really, really great. And I love it how you said, don't take no for an answer, just keep persevering. Um, and, it, and it does take just that dedication. And now over to Lynn Moore, the operations manager from Furs Platt Senior School, who is going to talk to you about all the different ways that in their secondary school, they're encouraging their students to come up with new innovative ideas that, and, and involve their staff in, in different sustainability initiatives. And over to you, Lynn. Hello there, I'm Lynn Moore and I'm the Head of Operations at Furs Platt Senior School in Maidenhead. Now, there's probably two strands in our school to our drive to let's go zero. Now, one half is the operations side, which is um, as head of operations, it's more my role. Um, and that's to do with installing solar panels and LED lighting and exciting things like that. Um, but the other half and arguably the, more, the most important part is getting students involved and engaging staff and students in sustainable actions. Um, now, how, so have we done that at our school? We've, um, we've done lots of different projects um, that have been you know, really exciting. And actually um, one of our main projects like Ed's is a garden. Um, we had a, um, a competition for students to design a garden and they came up with the most miraculous, fantastic plans. Of course, we wouldn't be able to carry all of them out, but from that, we picked up um, a number of aspects that they wanted in the garden. And just to list um, some of the things that we've done is we've got a wildflower meadow, um, which was absolutely beautiful in springtime. We've got um, some um, paths and seating, and so it's a really nice quiet place for students to go um, when they want to get away from the hubbub of, of the main school. We've applied for funding and, and luckily got funding for um, hedgehog houses, bird houses, a camera, I believe, a wildlife camera. So there's lots of, of things going in soon. Um, and it's also been really well used for biodiversity projects by our eco group um, and our gardening club as well have been very involved up there. Um, so um, some of the other things we've we've done at the school are um, we've got um, some six formers involved. Um, who are really quite keen and, and at least one of them wants to go on to a green career, which is really good. But they've done assemblies for students um, and we've also had two um, projects recently. Um, one was Meat Free Monday um, and the other one was to reduce plastic bottle usage throughout the school. Now. There have been challenges along the way. And in fact, unfortunately, Meat Free Monday wasn't a great success to start with because um, the, the profits were down. So our catering company um, weren't very pleased about that. But um, what we have realized is some of, some of the food was really popular. So we hope to do that again, to try and cut our you know students' um, from eating as much um, red meat in particular and more plant-based food will be on offer. Um, and then we've got um, our campaign to reduce plastic bottles um, because unfortunately students are still coming into the, the cafe and buying bottles of water, which doesn't make sense on, a financial, on the financial side either. 
Um, so we've encouraged students to bring in their own water bottles and a survey has been done by some of our sixth formers to all the students to find out where they want more water dispensers. So we've, we've got a lot more water dispensers around the school um, so they can get free water and save the environment at the same time. Um, OK, so I've thought of a few uh, recommendations for other um, other schools um, based on our experience over the last few years since we've really become keen on sustainability. And one of my main recommendations is to involve outside organisations. I've been quite amazed in Maidenhead about how many people have come forward to help us. We had wild Maidenhead help plant our wildflower meadow. Um, the local council have started an eco hub and want to be involved in sending volunteers to the school. Um, and I've already mentioned um, our six, well, six formers, they're not um, external, but they're, they're getting very keen to support the younger students. Um, and we're also a member of a sustainability network um, and various organisations other organisations. So, so my tip is to get involved with others because there's help out there. Um, and also, you know, just grab any opportunities that come along to, to, um, to spread the word. Um, we're, we're doing quite a lot of staff briefings now and in our newsletter, we always have an eco section. So we're just dropping little hints in regularly about sustainability. Um, Right, so I think that's all from me now. No doubt there'll be some questions later. That's great. Thanks, Lynn. And I really like how you mentioned, you know, reaching out to external organisations because there are so many out there that do want to support schools with the with this transition. Hmm. Thank you, Ed and Lynn, for those presentations. Really, really amazing to hear all the initiatives that you're taking in your school and how you're involving your students and, and staff. Just um, we've got a few questions for you that have come in. So I'll I mean, all questions are sort of can be um, given to either one of you. Um, so whoever would like to answer, pop your hand up. Um, the first question is, uh, what is the most challenging age group that you find in in your schools? And what do you feel would be the best way to, to engage with them? So who would like that first? Lynn, over to you. Lynn and then Ed. <laughs> I, I think from our experience, we tend to, they obviously start at, at, when they're 11 years old and we have a sixth form as well. So they leave when they're 18. And I think the middle years are the, are the most challenging. I've definitely seen um, a growing um, interest from our sixth formers. And um, that's, that's fantastic to see, especially if they're going to move on to green careers. Um, and we are also focusing on some of our, our younger students and they're the ones that tend to join the clubs um, in, in year seven and eight. Um, so what we're trying to do is encourage more of that. We're going to have assemblies run by our older students for the younger ones to try and engage more of them and then over time hopefully we can keep them on board with regular um, and fun activities as well to to keep them interested throughout those difficult middle years yeah definitely i'm i mean using peer-to-peer -peer learning and sort of that that encouragement is, is a really good idea and and ed for yourself from a primary school perspective um Across our year uh, range age, so we, we go, we're from four years old all the way to nine, we're a first school. Um, we haven't found too much problems. I think they've been really engaged, really enthusiastic. They all want to take part, um, give them a litter picker and they're well away, uh, whether that's in the school grounds or in the local community. Um, they're really, really enthusiastic to all want to get involved. And I think through the pledges that we make, uh, that really engages the children um, in, a, in a particular environmental topic which then they can then take home um, and teach their parents and teach the you know the, the local community about too so um, we haven't seen too much problems really um, I think they, they're just really enthusiastic they all want to get involved and do their bit 
That's that's great to hear. And actually, you mentioning the pledges, um, I was wondering, how does a class choose the pledge that they take for the year? So it's usually related to uh, something that they're learning in the curriculum, um, whether that's about deforestation or um, or looking at uh, wildlife. Um, and then uh, the children come up with the ideas and they look at the several development goals and they have to link them to, to, the, to those goals. And then it becomes a vote, it's a democratic vote. They've got to put their, their case forward, I suppose, to why they think that, that their pledge should be the class pledge. And there's lots of um, uh, arguments to and for and, and against. And then it becomes, and then there's a vote at the end. And then whoever um, wins that vote for their pledge, that's the pledge that that class uh, leads with. Uh, that's that's really fantastic and it's a really great way of em empowering the students in making that decision of their pledge for the for the year that's really great um so on to our our next our next question um and we'll maybe we'll we'll start with ed first and then go to lynn second for this one um is what's your best in advice for engaging staff maybe those that aren't quite as engaged in sustainability as you, as you would like them to be um, get them involved, get them involved practically, give them ideas of what they could be doing within their class uh, to, to get their children um, involved, challenge them, um, particularly with like pledges and things. It's something that, you know, they can have an interest for, of, of their own that they can then take part with in their, in their class, uh, in their classroom and then across the school. Uh, if they've got an interest in a, in a certain topic uh, area, then you know that that's a good way to sort of uh, go in, uh, but also making sure that they've got ideas and and that, and support as well that they can they don't feel like sort of isolated. They you know they've got somebody that they can go to and and sort of uh, bounce off ideas and things with, um, and, and it's just like giving them that sort of roadmap there that, that that guidance that you know just to say you know you can do this and and giving just giving them some ideas. No, amazing. Yeah. And definitely, you know, making them feel part of the team and that they're, they're supported through this is, is really great. Um, and Lynn, for, for yourself? Well, we have um, regular staff briefings on sustainability and we're often t asking staff to turn off lights, to turn off projectors, to, you know, close windows and all sorts of other measures to um, reduce our energy usage. And all, all of that, you know, they can find a bit negative so what we what we also try and do is make sustainability fun for staff as well as for students and some of our departments started by the english department but it's spreading have got a paperless challenge so um we, we've we've got to drive across the school to move paperless and more efficient um but now they're checking the readings of the photocopiers every month to find out which teacher has managed to in each department has managed to pre print the least copies and they probably get a chocolate bar or something like that um so that's a fun way of engaging staff but i think that the most important message is encouraging staff to um include sustainability within their curriculum subjects because every subject within the curriculum has some type of link to sustainability and and that is going to be the most important thing for us to take forward yeah definitely definitely i mean curriculum links they're all there and there's a lot of resources out there to support mm. teaching staff to, to help with them i also really like the rewards and recognition for the paperless challenge i think just like young people adults like treats yeah. as well yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and Alex, I know you've done you've done quite a lot of work with schools. So I was I was wondering what your best advice would be on on engaging staff members who aren't quite engaged at the start. Well, as much as I absolutely love the idea of just bribing them with chocolate bars, I think that's fantastic. We should all do that. Um, a couple of key bits of advice really that, that we've seen really work. So, firstly, when you're starting something new, the first thing to do is to find out what's happening already. So uh, across your school to always see what little pockets of excellence are going on already within the individual classrooms and within the individual staff and celebrating and then sharing those across the school. So that's always a good way to, to win, win over some friends when you're engaging staff on a first time basis in this and sustainability and climate. The second thing is to just take by, 
bite-sized chunks. So, um, and actually the paper is a really good example in printing. So we don't go to a, back to the staff room and say, right, we're not gonna print anything ever again. Make that change to say, well, we're gonna start by just recording what we do print. And then we're maybe gonna have a challenge to see how little we can print. And then we're gonna maybe next year put a target on and then the following year make that target a little bit harder so that we know that in there's a longer term um, aim that we're going to get to a higher higher point that we're happier where we may be only printing absolutely essential items so that will get has a much better um reaction from staff than making that uh, suddenly asking them to do everything differently so that that can be a really good so step by step is a good approach Yeah, definitely. Quick, easy wins are, are a really way, a good way of making your staff feel motivated to, to take action. So just to end on our on our final question today, um, and Lynn or Ed, I mean, feel free to, to raise your hand and, and jump in. What's the benefit of being involved in a wider initiative like Let's Go to Zero for yourself? Lynn, Lynn, over to you first. <laughs> um, well, fortunately, um, since we became a case study on the Let's Go Zero website, we've had interest from various um, parties contacting us wanting to find out more. Um, and that's been that's been very exciting. And um, the head teacher found out and all of a sudden our newsletter that came out on Friday, the, the main the front page is all about um, our sustainability and um, the Let's Go Zero campaign. So um, it's about it, it, it's it's made it easy to communicate um, outwards what we're doing and to get other people um, interested. Oh, that's really fantastic to hear that it's made that impact already. That's mm. really great. Mm. Thank you, Lynn. And Ed? Um, it's given the children confidence. Um, confidence to speak out in what they believe in, uh, given teamwork, uh, children working together. Um, it's given them a voice, it's given them passion. Um, you know, I, I can't speak highly, I can't speak highly of, um, you know, let's go zero. Um, it, it's really, it's really uh, sort of galvanized our school and brought it together and, and really inspired our community to get involved too. That's, that's so lovely to hear from both of you, really, that you feel part of this nationwide community and that, that you know, your, your, your students and your staff are, are feeling encouraged and empowered by joining the campaign. Um, so thank you both for, for presenting. It's, it was fantastic to hear what you've been up to in your, in your schools. And I wish you all the best for your future initiatives and, and you know, stay in touch and we'd love to hear, hear all your stories and share them as widely as possible. Thank you.